Um, I'm very happy to have some words with you tonight. And uh, for me, it's, it's a topic I know, but it's the first time I, I speak about that, about money. Um, I, I am a coach, a life coach. I built a huge school um, in the French part of the world to teach people how to become a life coach um, on a very spiritual way. Not to coach people from the mind, but to coach them from the soul, from the heart. And uh, I realized that in the personal development or in the spirituality, a lot of people struggle with money because a lot of beliefs and uh, it was also my story before and uh, I would like to share some tips with you from my experience I mean I don't have the answers to every questions I don't have the truth but I will share about my story okay so um, I was in my childhood I was very shy it was like a sickness for me being so shy. I was in a, I lived in a little city in Belgium and uh, I was the oldest child of four and I was very, very shy. But I had a lot of dreams and um, my parents, my education was very strict and Catholic. So I'm, I've grown in a, in a family where money is bad, okay? So if you have a lot of money, it's because there is a problem. Maybe you are not honest. Uh, because the fact that if you don't have money, um, it means that you are close to people, you can help them. My parents were very engaged to help a lot of people. Very poor people and people getting out of prison, they help them. So for them, in the beliefs, um, if you help people, you cannot be rich. If you want to be close to the humans, you have to be very simple. So I've grown with that in my mind. And I, it was very difficult because a part of me was enjoying that simple life and another, and another part of me wanted to be like to travel and um, to discover very beautiful places and uh, I always loved beautiful things um, fast cars and uh, yeah so I was always like oh my god if I'm not happy if I go to too much simple things and I'm not happy if I go to my love for the beautiful because if I go to the, my love for the beautiful my parents will not love me okay we grow everyone um, with love love is a very powerful emotion and we always search to be loved by our parents so it was always, I was struggling with that a lot. And um, in my thinking, it was not possible to be, to love, to do beautiful things in life, very expensive, and to be simple. It was like two different things. And so I had a relation with money, with love and hate. So I can earn money uh, when I was young, and I spend a lot. Then I was broke. I can earn again, and then I spend a lot. Then I was broke. And I always tried, I have an entrepreneur mindset. I love to build things, and I tried a lot of things. Um, I tried to uh, build a business around a champagne in Belgium, but I failed. <laughs> Um, and also it was difficult for me to choose um, a good partner associate 
uh, I had a, a lot of problems with that. So one of them took the money and went away. And um, yeah, I tried to do a lot of things, but I was always focused on I want success. And then I realized if I continue like that, it will happen again and again and again. I will earn and lose, earn and lose, always. And then I discovered uh, personal development. I started to read books. And I realized that if it's going wrong, it's not the fault of the other people. It's I, I have to take the responsibility to me. So if things are coming over and over and over in my life, it's because of me. It's not because of other people. So at the age of 24, I met a guy. I was working at the police in Belgium. So it was a lot of security. And uh, I met a guy there, and he was drawing things like this. He was drawing like this, things like this, and like this, and like this. And I was really curious about what he did. And I, we started talking. And he told me that he was working in a, a multi-level marketing structure. I don't know if you know about that, but some company are working like that, like Tupperware. You know Tupperware? Yes. Herbalife. Herbalife. So you can start, you can sell a product, and you can hire people. OK? And um, he told me, look, you, you can, I can show you how to do it, and uh, you can join. And uh, it, it was very interested to hire me because the most you hire people, the most you earn. Okay, and I was very attracted by that system because it meant that if you begin at the bottom, you can you can work a lot and arrive here. It's possible for everyone. You don't need to study a lot. You just need to work. And I was very attracted. And another thing was that he said to me, you know, if you have a lot of results, we are going to travel. You can earn some uh, travels to very beautiful places. And if you, there are some levels. And at the fourth level, if you arrive there, you will receive an amazing watch, a golden watch by, I don't know if you know the brand Chopard. Do you know that brand? It's a very famous brand. Uh, in the Festival of Cannes, uh, all the actors wear that kind of je jewelry. And he said, if you arrive at that level, you will receive that watch, and we will, we will call your family, and we will give you that watch to, in front of 800 people and your family. And at that moment, for me, it, it catched me because my father said when I was 21, just go out of the house. I don't want to see you anymore. And so I was searching for being loved by my parents. So when he said that, my heart was going so big, like, I want to do it. I want to show them I can do something and I'm someone. So I started um, coming in that kind of structure. And I learned so much. It was like a school of life for me because I learned to speak to people, to hire people, to motivate people, to coach people, to do everything that I do today. And um, I, I was very hungry. <laughs> I worked a lot because I was focused on that fourth level, on that stupid watch. and. Um, when it arrived, the party, my parents, they, they were not really interested by that thing. Because for, for them, it was not the real life. The real life is to help each other. It's not money. It's not being loved. It's not about that. 
And for me, I realized that I was wrong. I was running after something that I was wrong. I just wanted to be loved. So I changed. And I realized that I had a lot of beliefs about money, about success, about everything that I was chasing. So I will call it this, the first pass part of my life, like the more basic, basic part, like I was thinking if I want more, if I want more money, you can come here, close to me. <laughs> you are not punished. It's the best place. <laughs> Be welcome. Because I was thinking like it was very, in French we say binaire, binaire. How do you say in English? Binaire. It's like plus or minus, black or white, you know? Duality, yes, yes, because it was my education. Um, it's good or bad. It's the hell or the paradise. It's, it's always like that. And so in my mind, I was, I was like this. So I had the belief like if I want more success, I have to work more. But if I have a lot of money, I'm a bad person. So it was like a mess in my brain. <laughs> so I earned and I lost. I earned, I lost, I earned, I lost. And I realized the first thing I had to do is to work on my subconscious mind uh, because the relationship I had with money was wrong. So I, I was, the first thing I did is to observe me, not to judge, just to observe. Oh, how am I, how is my relation with money? If I go to the restaurant, do I first check the price or do I first check what my body wants, you know? If I'm looking for a job, do I first check how much I earn or do I first check if I'm passionate about what I do? And so I started to ask me a lot of questions about yeah, my, my relationship with money. And I, I, I realized that my, my relationship was pretty shitty. And uh, I had to change my mind. So I first made a list about all my beliefs about money. And then I realized I had to change it. So when you want to change a belief, you, you have to change the story you tell to yourself about the belief. So for me, the experience was to interview a lot of famous and wealthy people that are helping others really, truly uh, making the good. Because in my mind it was not possible, because I was educated about that. So I started to interview that kind of people, so I wrote them, uh, I have a YouTube channel, I would like to interview you, and uh, are you okay with that? Because we can help a lot of people through internet. And I did the interview in a stuff that they were expert in. And after the interview, we went for lunch or something, and I spoke about my stuff. How did you do? How were you when you, was, when you were young with money? Because I have the belief that if I earn a lot of money, I will become a bad person. How do you deal with that? So that kind of people, they told me the relation they had and how they changed it. And how the fact that, with the fact that they have a lot of money, they can help a lot of people. Money is, is, is a very powerful thing to help others. So it changed my mind. 
I met one, two, three, four, five people. And I realized that the people I met were very successful, but they were so generous with very beautiful causes for children, for poor, everything like that. And I was like, oh my God, I can do the, I can be both. I can be successful in business and money, and I can help other people. It can be both. Because I met people that did it. And so it changed my beliefs. And I started to read books about people, because when you read a book, it's like you connect to the soul of the writer. I don't know if you have that experience with books, but when I read a book, I can really connect with the soul of the person who wrote it. And I, I wrote a book called uh, Conversations with God. I don't know if you know that book. Conversations with God. Maybe there is a movie. Yeah, maybe there is a movie about that. And in that book, he, it was very spiritual, so like my childhood. And it was about like, you can be both. You can have a lot of money and you can help people. So it was like, oh, another person thinking like that. How can I connect to that people? How can I meet him? How can I change my mind? I believe in the power of connection. I, be, I believe in the power of create a lot of links. I don't like the words self-development because it's all about ourselves in our small house, alone, in the kitchen or in the living room, watching videos or reading books or doing work. I love the, the fact to connect to people. So for me, interviewing people, it was like healing me. Okay? That was the first part. Um, and I, I also observed myself speaking in that moment. I had words like, oh, if I had more money, I would travel. If I had more money, I would, I would buy that house. If I had more money, I would build that business. And I was like, oh my God, how can I switch it? Switch it like, I can travel with no money. And because I will travel, I will be happy. And I will attract money because my energy level will be higher. You see what I mean? Yeah? So I realized that in our minds, things are built in the wrong way, on the wrong side. We can, we can just change it, change the side. So there started the second part, and it's more about spirituality. I realized that everything is about energy and that we are all connected. That's why I wanted to make a circle, to be more close to you. And I realized that um, if I go to some places, my energy is higher. I feel better. There is more joy in me. I just want to connect. And if I go to some other places, my energy is going down. And it, even if I'm surrounded by some people, my energy is like, oh my God, I'm so happy. I'm so good with them. And if, I, if I'm surrounded by other people, my energy is going down. So it, it's always about how can I observe myself from a bigger picture? not judging me, but just observe myself. When I eat something, is that food bringing me energy for days and hours? Or 
after one or two hours, is my energy going down? I did it with every part of my life. Food, people around me, uh, actions, places, everything. Like observing, oh, how, how am I feeling? Am I good? Am I not good? And when you observe that, after you can make decisions, you can be with friends and feeling not so good. And that's a very important moment because, because we, want to, we want to be loved, we, we, we don't hear it. We just like, oh, I have to stay because they are my friends for 10 years now, so I have to stay. Or, oh, that's my parents, they say that to me, so it's the truth. You know? And so I start questioning everything. I don't have the truth, and I think no one has. Only my experience is the truth, okay? About my energy level inside, like a battery going up or going down. And when I started that, it changed everything. Because I realized that I focused on the money and it was not increasing my energy. I was not happier having more money. Um, I, I felt something was empty in me. And I, and I always wanted to fill it with food, with alcohol, with drugs, with sex, with success. And I started to discover spirituality. I started to hear some people speaking about God in a way I never heard it. I mean, in the Catholic way, I didn't like it. I didn't like going to the church. I didn't like that kind of stuff because I didn't understand why people were so sad in churches. <laughs> and it was so gray and dark and uh, so sad. And, and uh, yeah, I was very rebel about that. And I, I started to, the people I met with interviews, I realized that they had a close relation with something they called God, something bigger than themselves. And they were always working for something bigger than themselves. They were not working for their own dreams. They were working some, like, for a big plan. I want to help others. I want to save people from poverty. I want to teach children. I want to build uh, another world. I want, and they were working for a cause. Do you understand what a cause is? It's, is it the same word in English? Yeah? Okay. So, and the cause they worked for was never themselves. Never. And I realized like, oh, I have to focus less on myself and more of what I want to bring to people, what I, what I want to bring to the world. And speaking with them and observing that kind of people that inspired me, I realized that I wanted to find my own cause. And maybe it's a small tip for you to find your, your own cause. Because when you find this, it's like a superpower. You are, limit, you are unlimited. You are so powerful. Even if you are shy, you can speak to the whole world because you have this, okay? And I realized that always by observing myself, 
some things in the world, some political decisions made me very hang angry. And I observed that anger, what, why it was growing in me. Was it an anger about uh, the environment, the ecology? Was it a, a, an anger about not respecting each other? And one day I made an experience in Belgium in a bus and I saw a woman insulting a black guy in the bus. Really, it was crazy. She was shouting at him and, okay, and insulting him. And I was shocked. And nobody, nobody did anything. Everybody was just like watching the, the ground. And it was bigger than me. I had to react. So I'm quite big. I didn't want to talk, so I just went in front of the woman, between the woman and the guy. And I was thinking like, if I'm in between, they, she will stop to, to insult that guy. But she, <laughs> she did it again. It was not enough. And when the bus stopped, the, the doors opened, I took the woman like this and I put her out of the bus. And I didn't realize what I did. It was crazy. And she was so shocked. She was like, she does, didn't understand what I did. And she was like, it, she didn't move. And the bus, the doors closed and the bus started again. And I was like, Oh my God, what, what did I do? <laughs> and I, I went to the guy, the black guy, and I said, oh, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't imagine. N now it was like three, four years ago, I didn't remember. In, that, in this time, having no respect for this, it's like 100 years ago, how is it happening? And I, and I told to him, you are... You have a great value, you have a great light, light in yourself. And then I went to my seat back, like shaking a little bit. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> what was that? I don't know. And after I realized that for me, everyone has a light inside and I cannot stand in front of something watching someone disrespect, disrespect another people and trying to, to push him on the ground. And I realized that maybe it's my cause. I want to make people shine. I want to remember them how powerful they are, how gifted they are, and how we can serve the world together creating connection because another thing that's that's hurting me a lot is when people are lonely i was very shocked when the COVID came with all the decisions because i was like oh my god people will die because they are lonely not because of the virus just because they are lonely it's it's crazy what's happening and i started to create a lot of things I started to create a group on Facebook for high sensitive people uh, because that kind of people can feel very alone in their own life. Feeling like, oh, I'm from another planet. I don't belong, I don't belong from this world. And I wanted to serve that kind of people, not uh, common people like strange and weird people. I love that kind of people. Um, having this, the sensation coming from another planet. And uh, all my energy was putting not being successful or having mon money, but just going into my calls. What can I do? I don't care about the money. What can I do? Where can I start? Just giving for free. I coached thousands of people for free, hundreds of conferences for free. 
And one day, <laughs> is it okay you follow me? Is it not too boring? No? If you have questions, don't hesitate. We will take a moment after for questions and answers with pleasure. And I realized that being here was not feeding my soul. I was learning a lot of stuff, a lot of skills, but it was not feeding my soul. Because the company saw people only about like a wallet, how money, because it was in the finance. I, I sold a life insurance. So what, it was all about how, how much can he give. So that's my commission and that's the travel I will earn. And that's, it, it was all about that. It was not about the human connection. So I was like, mm, it's not feeding my soul. I have to quit. They all thought I, I was crazy because I was very high in the, in the structure. So I earned a, really a lot. And I stopped everything from one day to the other. I never care about having a plan B. Never. I realized that a lot of people, even if they are bad in their situation, in their job, in the place they live, they always wait and stay there and they wait for a plan B. So they can lose this for that. You know? And I realized that walking into life like that, it's a problem because it's because of a lot of inner insecurities. We we think that money will bring us security. We think that a job can bring us a security. We imagine that uh, a relationship will bring us security. And we are always chasing about that. Oh, I need another job. Oh, I need another relationship. Oh, I need that. And we just forgot how life is working. Life is all working all about energy. And what we manifest, when we create in our heart, we can have it. Abundance is everywhere around us. I mean, they print new money every day. So it's not something that's just stuck and we need a, a small part of it. No, it's, it's open. They print money every day. Everything is possible. And I realized that I had to listen to my soul, not my mind and my security, but my, what my soul wants. And it's funny because when I entered this place, I, I watched that sentence, success for me is doing what you like with people you enjoy. And I was like, oh my God, we can just stop the speaking, the evening, and just go away with that sentence. That's the truth. Success is about that, doing what you like. And when you start observing you, and when you start to feel your energy level, you start to understand what you like and what you don't like, what you want and what you don't want. It's like an inner voice speaking to you. And it's just to follow it. Even if everybody is saying you're crazy. Even if you, if you quit your house and you start to travel with no money, that are all crazy ideas. But because you do that, that jump in the nothing, that's where that's, it's, it's at that moment that something bigger than us gives a net, a nest. Nest? Net? Net. Net? Okay. Because 
we never want to jump in the nothing because we, we see no net. <laughs> oh no, I, I don't go. It's, it's because we look for security. We look for safety. And we look for controlling things. We love control so much. The thing is that here we have the illusion to control. There, you know that you control nothing. Nothing. Tomorrow we can die, even this evening, even in five minutes. I don't decide. I'm so small. And I started to listen to, yeah, that inner voice. And the voice said, quit that place. And my mind was like, oh no, because I'm so comfortable. I have a lot of money. I travel. It's so fun. And my inner voice said, no, no, you have to quit. OK, let's quit. And my mind was like, yeah, but for what? And my inner voice said, like, for nothing. You just have to go in the silence. We love, we love a lot of sound around us. And going into there is going into a lot of silence, a lot of nothing. And in that silence, we start to feel connected to the nature. We started to feel connected to the ocean, to the sun, to the moon, to everything. And I felt that I just wanted to help people getting better. So I was like, oh, what can I do? I can sell a lot of things. I can manage people. I can hire them. I can speak in public. What, what, what do I want to do? And I realized that I helped so much people to go to a better place in the structure of the company. And I realized that it's all about love. When people feel loved and secure, they give the best they can. And I wanted to start to give conferences, to give a lot of confidence and trust to people to say, you are gorgeous, you are great, you can do anything you want, just go and just do it. Stop thinking. And it was like eight years ago, and I, it was not a success. Because it was not what people wanted to hear. And I was like, OK, I have to change my approach. I want to speak to them about something they feel connected with. And I realized that 50% of the people in the world, they want to lose weight. <laughs> and it was crazy because I have an experience about that. I lost 30 kilos. So I was like, oh, because I changed everything in my life, listening to my body and my energy level and everything. And I was like, oh, I can teach them how to lose weight and love themselves much better. Because people think that if they are skinny, then they will have more love to them, for themselves. You remember, a lot of things are built in the wrong side. And I was like, oh, it's the contrary. Because they will have more love from themselves, then they will have a better body. Because when you love yourself, you eat like you love yourself. When I ate a lot of shit, it's because I hated me. Because I felt so empty inside. So I tried to put some food to feel like not empty anymore. It was very emotional. And I started to talk about that. I said, talk, come to my conference. You will lose one kilo coming to my conference. And it's crazy. Because that's what they want. <laughs> I, I understood a lot of that. 
people want results without effort. That's what they want. So I, I, lo I love to observe people, to observe humans, how they think, how they behave, what they want. And I started to uh, help them to lose weight, but the real deal for me was to make them love themselves. It was my focus. And uh, it was a success. And one day, I met a girl, and uh, we were so much in love, and she became pregnant. And uh, we had a discussion, like a little fight, and she left. And I never saw her again, from one day to the other. And it was like, energetically, it broke my heart in a million of pieces because I'm very ambitious on a professional way, but for me, building a family is much more precious than everything on earth. And on that moment, I lost everything. The woman, the baby she, she had in her belly, and energetically, with my broken heart, all my business fall apart. I earned nothing anymore from one day to the other. It was crazy. I, I didn't understand anything. And I was so bad. I, feel, I felt so sad. I remember in Belgium, in, in, in the small city I lived, I was in, a, in an apartment on the third floor, I don't remember. I just wanted to open the, the window and to jump because I felt so bad inside. I just wanted to be stopped. You know, I don't know if you ever lived a situation with going through a divorce or going through uh, a very bad illness or a very bad news, or, but at that moment you feel like shit and it's so painful, you don't know what to do. And the thing is that at that moment, you feel so alone because you feel ashamed about your situation and you don't want to speak about it to people you love because you feel ashamed. And then you feel more alone and then you just want to, to, to stop it. So I had thoughts like, oh, jump. If you jump and you die, it's finished. You feel nothing anymore. I knew I, I, I won't do it, but I had that small voice in my head. I was really de devastated. I lost everything, all the money, all the success. I had nothing anymore. And it's like to understand the pure essence of life, life push you in some places that you have nothing anymore. You know what I mean? You have to be very sick to remember how amazing is the health and our body. You have to lose everything to have the courage to build something else because we always <laughs> want to control the old and to be attached to the old things, you know? And at that moment, I was, it was so difficult for me, but now I can see it from a distance, a perspective, and see, oh, it's, it was so amazing to be in that situation because, because I had nothing anymore. It was a, a, a new, I can make like a new start in my life. It's a great moment to lose everything because when you lose everything, you have nothing to lose anymore. So it's like a moment like everything is possible again. And I, you know when you earn money, for example, like, like this, this is the money you earn and this is your 
the money you, you, you spent. Okay? But when you earn nothing anymore, it's zero like this, the, the, the fees you have, the money you have to, ex to spend is this, like almost the same. So that's where the debts start. Uh, so I started to have a lot of debt and I have an employee and uh, she had a family and I didn't want to tell her what I, what I lived. So I started to sell my car to pay her. And uh, yeah, it was a, a lot of stuff. And because I always like to make interviews, at that moment I had an interview with a woman. She was a healer, energetic healer. And she made a TEDx, you see the, the TEDx on YouTube? Um, about something and I was working there and uh, I was saying oh it was so great can I interview you because you were amazing and she said yeah okay let's do it so at that moment I had that interview planned so I had to go and my mind said no you are like feeling like shit don't go just postpone it and I was like no I I'm engaged so I go and I ar arrived there and she, she saw my energy. My energy was so down. And she said, oh, you have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> and I said like, oh yeah, not, not only one problem, so much <laughs> problems together. And I started to speak with her what happened in my life. And she said one sentence that, that changed my life. She said, that just start back from your inner values. From your values. And I was like, okay, what are my values? Maybe one of my values is family. Maybe another one is uh, sharing. Maybe another one is love. And then I was thinking, oh, family is love. Is, I, I'm just <laughs> fucked up about that. <laughs> so it's a difficult part to start again <laughs> on that one. And I made some research on Google in the internet about how can you find your values. And I realized a guy was talking maybe making a short video about how to find your values. And he said something like, the real values you have, not the one you think you have, the real ones you have are the one that you put your money in, your time in, and your energy in. And I was thinking, oh, okay. What are the values I put my money in, my energy, my time in? And I realized that I really love to learn a lot to, for self-growing. So maybe it's a value I have to invest time and money and energy to learn stuff. And I realized that when I learn something, I like to share. I like to give it to others what I learned. I like to contribute. And she said, start from that. <laughs> and I had an idea that maybe I can share about the situation I am in, that I lost everything. I will give a conference to say, sometimes in, li in life you feel like shit and you lose everything. And here is what's, what, what's helping me in this moment. I had that conversation with that woman about the values, so I can maybe start from there and you can do the same. And, and... But I was depressed. And I, start, I put on Facebook an event and the name of the event was, do you really know yourself? Because I realized, because I lost everything, I realized that a lot of things I I had in my life, my situation and everything was like my identity. And because I lost everything, it's like I had no identity anymore. I didn't know who I am really deep in myself. So 
the title of the conference was Do, Do You Really Know Yourself? And under the, the image, I just put Brussels, Liège, it was my city, Paris, uh, Geneva, and Montreal in Quebec. Because I, I'm always being ambitious. <laughs> and I went to that place for five people because five people subscribed to the conference and I was like, okay, I stop. So I deleted the event. I said to the people, okay, you are, you are in, the, in the place. Uh, here is the address. Um, let's meet them there. And I deleted the event, not to have too much people because I was so depressed. I cannot speak to a lot of, a lot, a big group of people. And I came there and I started to speak and we, we started to share about our stories and how we can just stand up again. And when I came back home, I was happy, really happy. And I was like observing myself like, oh, how is it possible? I lost everything, I'm depressed and now I'm happy. And I realized it was because I shared. I started from my values again. And I was like, oh, let's start again. Let's do another event, maybe with 10 people. I can, I can do it. And next week, I had 10 people. And then the next week, I had 20 people. And then the next week, 40 people. And then 200, and then 500 people. And then thousands of people came into that conference that became to be different. Uh, the purpose was different. It was about living the life of our dreams. And how can we take action when we are full of fears? And how can we deal with emotions? You were in one of that conferences in Belgium. And uh, it was crazy because I was so broke and I made a conference about how to live our dreams. <laughs> I had no car anymore and I was going with my bike on the, on the conference and I was parking so far from the conference, I didn't want them to see me coming with a bike, you know, because the, the title was live the life of your, of your dreams. <laughs> maybe riding a bike could be your dream. Yeah. Of course, but you know, sometimes we had like, very strange stories in our minds. No, I think I don't care, but at that moment I was like ashamed about that. And I started just to listen about that inner voice and about life and about the signs. And I started to meet people in the street recognizing me because they came at the conference and saying, oh, I came to your conference yesterday or last weekend and uh, it's so great, I changed this, I changed this in my life, and I, I was always stopping and talking with them. Oh, what did you change? What happened to you during the conference? What did you love? Uh, how can I improve it? Do you have some ideas for others after? And they said, oh, I wanted to do the, the same as you. I want to become a speaker, I want to coach people, and uh, I want to uh, go into a school. So I just subscribed it to a coaching school. Okay, congratulations. And the next day I met another people telling me the same. And the day after another telling me the same. And I was like, oh, thank you God for the signs that you sent to me. Maybe it's time for me to create my own school. And so that's how it started. And since I started my school, it was not easy. I mean, in the beginning, I've had a lot of stories or I almost lost everything and I had to stand up again and to continue and to keep going. And today, yeah, it's crazy because I had a call a few weeks ago with my accountant and he told me, Andre, you don't realize you do 200% more each year. It's crazy what's happening to your company. 
And she said, do you know how much you earn? I, I said, I don't know. <laughs> because if I can help, the, the, more, the more people I can, it's just what makes me happy. And if I can travel, and if I have money for that, I'm so happy. And he said, I think you're earning this year 500,000 euros. Do you realize? I said, no, I don't. But I think I can make the double next year. <laughs> and the double next year again, because there are so much people to help. So maybe if you can uh, memory something about what I told is observe yourself. What's your relationship with money? How can you change it? By make, making experiences. And how you can connect to a cause coming from your heart. And observe when you have big emotions in your life, like big, big anger, also big sadness. Emotions are not good or bad. They are just messages. When I feel very angry about something, it's a huge amount of energy being angry. So how can I put that anger into, into something I can serve people, you know? And connect to something bigger, to serve. We are here to connect. We are here to help each other. And it's all about that. And we, when you focus on what you can do for others, success is coming after. And uh, it's, it's a very beautiful life we all have. And maybe one last thing. It's quite important. When that woman told to me, uh, start back from your values. It was also crazy because I always ask to the people I interview, oh, what are you reading right now? And she told me nothing. I was like, you don't read books? She said, I read so many books, but since two years, I read nothing. I was like, oh, that's amazing. I want to experience it too. So I stopped to read anything, to watch any video, to go to any conference. I just wanted to connect to nature and to feel what the messages for nature for me were and how can I give it to people. Not listening to someone and repeating what the person was saying, you know, to find my own truth. And one year ago, one year and a half, my sister told me about a woman on internet, on YouTube, French woman, and she's a medium, she is a channeler, Aurore. Joanna know her because they we for Christmas, for Christmas with Aurore, we, we went to her place. And uh, I watched one video and uh, I was like, oh, she's funny. She's really a nice person. I, I love her energy. And uh, I saw under the video that she sold a book called, in French, Hope, Espoir. And uh, I was like, my inner voice said, like, buy this book and read it. OK, so I bought that book and I read it. And it, it's a book she, she all channeled the book in five days. Five hours. In five hours, she channeled. And she spoke in a little recorder. And then in five days, she wrote all what she recorded, what she heard. And the book is like mm, mind-blowing. It's like a Bible. It's like, it's like explaining you, uh, you a whole life is working. How you can just follow your energy. How you can just follow your joy. That's the path. That's the joy. And uh, I was like, oh, I want to interview that girl. 
I want to make her known to my community and to help her to sell her book. So I was searching for her number and it was so difficult. I also went to Republic Dominican to have her number. It was crazy. And then we met here in Portugal. She was living in Portugal. I didn't know about that. And we met in my place in Falesia, you know, Falesia Beach, close to Albufera. I love that place. The energy is so high on that beach. And uh, we met and we went for the interview and we spoke during one hour. And when we ended, I realized that the, the battery was down and the memory of the thing was down. And I recorded just one minute. And I was like, oh shit. It was so a long travel to have a number. And, and she sat like smiling, oh, we have to see each other again. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, let's do that. And then we started to become friends. And we are very close. We were for Christmas to your place before going to Costa Rica and everything. And uh, last summer, she was in a very bad mood. She lost her boyfriend and she was not good. And she said, Andre, where are you in the world? And I said, I'm, I'm visiting my parents in Belgium. I thinking maybe going to Corsica, you know, Corsica, the islands in France. And, and she said, oh, I'm, the south of, I'm in the south of France. Can you come and join me? We, maybe we can speak together and going to the ocean and just having fun because I'm so bad. And I said, of course, I'm free for one week, so I'm coming. And then we were biking and she said, oh, Andrea, I, I forgot. I have an appointment with a medium because I have so many questions with that boyfriend and I'm so bad that my energy level is too bad to channel. To channel, you have to be in a very high energy. So she, had, she said to me, I have that appointment, can we stop? I do my appointment on WhatsApp video and I come back in 40 minutes. I said, okay, let's do that. After 10 minutes, she came back to me and she said, the medium wants to speak to you too. <laughs> okay, I hope it's not painful. I hope it's good news. <laughs> Let's hear it. So she put the phone in the middle of us too. And the medium said, both of you, your soul wants more luxury. And I said, okay. Um, and I said to the medium, but you know, I have a lot of beliefs about money. I, I love to keep my life as simple as I can. I don't want to spend too much. And she said, oh, your soul wants more luxury. <laughs> I said, okay, it's a, it's a big deal, but I will try it. And one week after I was in Corsica. We spoke about that, I think. Yes, you came to Portugal to Lagos. Oh, before. And you booked an expensive hotel. Oh, yeah. I I, yes. Said, I need to spend <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, really? I don't read. I don't I remember you said it was August, peak season. And then she wants, he wants to stay in Cascade. So, okay, you want to stay in Cascade? I call Cascade. Stay oh, yeah, right. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Five star hotel in August. Yeah. Oh yeah, the price was crazy. And I was in Corsica and I was like uh, looking on booking.com, the most expensive hotels in Corsica. And my mind was like, oh my God, it's so expensive. How is it possible to spend so much money for one night sleeping? It's and I was like, okay, I have to experience it. I have to, but my mind was, it was the story I told me last, like I'm going to be broke. I'm going to lose all my money if I do that. 
it's, it's the beliefs, they are strong in, in our head. But I did it. I made the booking. Two weeks, I can tell you. Oh, no, that's before. That's in Corsica. Oh, okay. Yeah. And when I did it, I didn't realize what, what happened in my body. It was like my body was so joyful and I was so happy. And I, I put the music on and I was dancing in my car. And I was, I was so fearful one minute before and I was so joyful one minute after. I, I understood nothing. And I arrived to that place and I arrived to the reception and I said, I'm, I'm Andre Roberti, I booked a couple of nights. Oh yeah, Mr. Roberti, we've upgraded you. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's crazy. <laughs> and I came into the room and I watched the rates of the room, you know, in the close to the door. I was like, oh my God, that's crazy. That's, the, that's three times more I paid, the, the amount that I paid. And I realized that when I was in such places, my body is different. I behave different. I think different. I have new ideas. I'm in an energy like everything is possible. And I'm not always in amazing places because I also like to just sleep on the beach and being very simple. I like both. But every time I go to very beautiful places, I come to the reception and they say, oh, we have upgraded you. It's like a remind from something bigger than me saying, congratulations, you invest in yourself and you believe in what you are asking inside of you. So that's changed everything in my energy. And I spent so much money in what I loved and I received so much more. That's crazy. And yeah, a couple of weeks later, I was coming back to Portugal and I said to Joana, I think you know the manager of the Cascade, the five star in Lagos. I want to be there for two weeks. She said, two weeks, Andre, it's very expensive. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I think last year, maybe I spent one month there. Yeah. And I, I arrived there today so I have so much memory about that. And so what the medium said to me, she said, a lot of things have changed in the energy of the world. So you have to change how you behave with money. The old way is to think like, oh, I have, I win, I earn so much, so I can spend this much, you know? And I have savings on my bank account and I control my money. The new way of the energy around us is very different. A lot of people speak about the 5D, a new 5D way of living, not 3D, but 5D. And she said to me, now you just have to follow the joy. You just have to follow the happiness and you just have to spend through that way. And we will bring you the money after. So it's not before, you know? And it's blowed my mind. And so I, I've changed so much since one year and money is coming and coming and coming over. And I don't know how, just focusing on going places I feel attracted to go and following my jo joy and feeding my soul to follow my calls to help others. So, yeah, that's my message tonight. Um, we can say a lot of things about the relationship with money, with peace, with being so full of joy and happiness, but yeah, I hope you have some tips about values, about everything like that. It's, yeah, it changed my life. Maybe it can change, help for your, your projects and everything. Thank you. Okay.
with pleasure. Do you want to... What time is it? You have a question? Yes. We can speak about... If you want to speak about subjects, I'm really open. I, I have some, some questions. Um, yeah. Because recently I found the true cause. Yes. Uh, and the joy also uh, is uh, uh, speaking to me as well. This, this okay. Work. Yeah. But I have a few questions. Um, when you were offering your services, for such a long time and for so many people yeah. and then when you switch to the moment that you have to start charging yeah. but the question is how do you make that switch and how do you find the balance of the you, you it's uh, everyone needs to get the money yeah. that they uh, deserve yeah in a balanced, energetical way. Do you understand? Yes, question? yes, yes. I it, don't know if it makes some uh, sense to Yeah, you. it's it's not easy <laughs> to, to make that that switch. But life, the universe, is always speaking to you. It's very magical. I'm I'm I feel very spiritual. So I I like to listen to the universe to speak with God, to give in my thoughts, my problems and everything. And what I, what I realized, it's answers uh, are everywhere around us. <coughs> so for example, if I have the habit to coach people and to charge 50 euros per hour, the universe will, make, will experience me situations to make me understand if it's enough or not enough. So if I cannot pay my bills, it's not enough. If people are coming to me for my service and saying, oh, you are so cheap, it's a sign from the universe to say you can go higher. You know? So I like to observe signs and a lot of things. And um, I always love what I always do. I don't know if you know Jim Rohn. It's a speaker. He was the mentor of Tony Robbins, the famous coach. And Jim Rohn said, do always more than what you get paid. Always. And if you are employee for someone and you do more than, than what you get paid and your boss doesn't see you, your efforts, just leave. And start working for yourself. And if you give a service to someone, just give them more than what they pay for. We just have a, a seminar of three days they were present, they come from Switzerland and Belgium. And they said, oh, Andre, it's, it's, it's so amazing to be close to you for three days and to speak with you and to have some tips and to... And so I'm always caring about how I, can I give more to them than what they expect. So if and if I charge 500 euros for one hour, I will give more than what they expect. And you can charge the amount you want. It's crazy. Because when you understand to listen to the soul of people, you can listen what to, what to bring to them. Uh, in, in coaching, if someone comes to you and fix a problem they have during 10 years and they solve it in one hour, what's the worth of it? Yeah. 5,000? 10,000? It's, it's so big. So you have to realize the value you bring to people. And if you don't realize it, 
people will tell you. You know? So listen, always listen to, to, to people, to what they need, to what they want. They will tell you. You will have signs. It can be a sign like you are in the grocery shop and you are buying some stuff and you hear two women speaking after you. And one is saying, oh, my daughter, she's doing that and she's charging so cheap. My God, she has so many problems. The universe is bringing that conversation to your ears to understand that you are charging too cheap. You know, it's always science like. To, uh, do the shift your own <coughs> yeah, the shift can be like slowly. People have to understand why you do the shift. Yeah. You have to explain the do value. I have to explain to people, please? Uh, I don't know. If it's very specific, we can speak about it. I don't know. I, I like to explain when the price entering my school is always getting bigger and bigger. Because what I do in the world, nobody does it. <coughs> and it's my focus. I coach people to realize what's, what is their gift, what is their uniqueness, and how they can serve, serve others with their gift, you know? So when you know your gift and you are in your um, genius zone, it's like there is no limit, you know? I remember you saying that that's about the gift. The yeah, point. I'm convinced, I'm really convinced that everyone has a gift. And I'm happy to remind people what's their gift. And listening to their soul and their heart, I can listen to what they are good in. So it's my gift <laughs> to, realize, to realize what's the gift of others. And yeah, my price is increasing entering my school because I'm bringing more and more value and the more I bring value, the more I listen to my clients, what they receive, how happy they are, and the more I realize what is my value. Because we never know. I never knew who I am. I still don't know who I am. The people I serve remind me what I bring to them, you know? So I, I'm very close to my clients. What do you live? What do you love in the school? <coughs> What value does it bring to you? How can we improve it? How can we? I'm very close about that. I'm very open. My ego can be very down. So I can speak with everyone to improve things, to improve myself. So we, we try to always make them a be better experience. So it's normal that the price is increasing. See? Oh. that you start making money of? For, in my experience, what helped me the most was going to the nature. I had a tree close to my house and I was so bad. I was so sad about everything that I didn't want to borrow people to speak about my problems. Comment est-ce qu'on dit tirer la chasse en anglais? Flush. Flush. Yeah. Flush. You know the flush? I realized that a lot of people contaminate other people with their emotions every day. And I don't want to do that. I want to take care about my own emotions. I want to flush it and then going to people with my good energy because I have so much respect for them. So I was so bad, I didn't want to bring my bad mood to everyone. 
So I went to the nature and I chose a very beautiful tree and I was sitting there for hours speaking with the tree. <laughs> like, I feel like shit. I, I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm so lost. I feel so alone. Can you just, can I hug you? <laughs> I was hugging the tree. And uh, it's like nature reminded me my own nature, who I was inside. And I had a very deep connection with nature. And sometimes I was sitting close to my tree and I saw like ants, little ants, bringing some big stuff, leaves, big leaves, and working together. And I was like, oh, thank you, God, it's a sign. Maybe I have to find some other ants like me and don't stay alone. So it's like, it's like I was receiving some stuff from the nature, some answers, and I tried to start from that again and uh, follow the doing what you like with people you enjoy. And when I lost everything, I helped so much people about weight loss, I stopped it. And I started to help people that wanted to help others. I realized that that kind of client make me more joyful. So I changed my focus on the people I wanted to serve. It's all about focusing about what makes you joyful. And today, a lot of them, we work together. And it's, it's so, so beautiful. So yeah, connecting to the nature. Yeah, I know, I remember. <laughs> Going to the silence. There was a beautiful video about, I don't know if you know the um, actor Jean-Claude Van Damme, it's a, it's a Belgian guy. And a lot of people are laughing at, at him, but I love this guy so much. And there is a small video and he's saying like, you have to go in the silence. In the silence of the universe and the words and stop um, hearing the sound of people, the noise of the TV, of the politics, of friends, of family, and going in, into your own silence. And when you go deep in that silence, you start to hear the voice of your soul. That's the experience about nature. If you go to the desert, a lot of people are organizing retreats in the desert for one week, 10 days. In the nothing, it's like you feel the whole universe and you start to feel, oh, I want to do this. Oh, 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 I have that new idea. It's like coming from nowhere, but it's coming from your soul because you, you put everything on the side. It's a big step. Because our ego is like, oh no, I want to hold it, <laughs> you know? Um, so that's why we make experience like illness, cancer, divorce, being broke. The universe wants to make us the experience of losing everything to start something new, more close to who we deeply are. Yeah. <laughs> I love nature so much. And it's crazy because today I have a foundation. Last year I built a foundation to help. Um, I go into schools. I mean, I give money to uh, some of my students and they go into schools in Europe to teach uh, children to deal with their emotion, to find their gifts, uh, to have more confidence and it's I love it I had a I had a meeting with a, one of my people yesterday and she said oh Andre the school is so happy about the work and I had 
um, three other schools, they want me. But I know it's your own money. Can I say yes? I say, yeah. Money is, is unlimited. Go to 10 schools if you are. So we can bring more joy, we can help more children, and we can serve more the environment, and we can... So it's, there is no limitation. I live, since a couple of months, I live in California, and I experience living in the States. It's not always easy, but I learned something. It's that here in Europe, we like to control the money. So I have this money, I can spend that money. I have that savings, and I, I can go to that restaurant, but maybe not taking a dessert because I have that kind of money. In the States, they just spend money. It's crazy, the relationship they have with money. If they, they just follow the joy. Oh, I, let's go to that party. Oh, let's go to that travel. And oh, I have my credit card, let's do it. Yeah, but I don't have... Very yeah. What I realized that also a lot of them, they, because I spoke with them and they are like, oh, okay, I don't have the money this month, but I really want to do that experience. I will make the money for the next month. I will make it. And so, and they make it. Some not, some do, does it, but it's all the experience of everyone. The one that are broke, it's on their path to be broke, to understand things, changing beliefs, you know? So when she said, oh, maybe I will charge 5,000 euros per month, maybe it's too much. And I said, no, we will find the money. Just go in the school. We will find it. You know, so let's take actions and we will find some way to do it after. It's, it's a different way of thinking. Yeah, I don't know if I answer you, but yeah, okay. <laughs> It's funny that, for me, it's like a sign being in this place with that value you have in what you built here. It reminds me to fight for children, for my foundation, and to focus on that. And the more I want to earn for the foundation, the more success I will have for the rest. It's, it's all connected. So, yeah, and it's funny because we were talking in the car today and Sandrine is, was working in finance and her gift is 
I think her gift is about communication. And she's like, oh, I don't know what to do in my life. And because I was in the finance and now I'm, I don't know how to say, like she received money for sickness or being, um, and when we spoke about the foundation yesterday, she said like, oh, I can go to schools and I can convince schools to have coaches and I can bring money to the foundation. And it was like she was enlightening in the moment. And I was like, oh, interesting. Her soul was speaking. Maybe I have to hire her going into schools and saying, look, we can put coaches in the school. And she can also go to business circle to say, look, guys, maybe we can, you can bring some money because we have young children and environment and ecology. And uh, yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah. COVID, since two years, COVID had a huge effect on people, a very beautiful ones, to realize that what do I really want in life? What is really meaningful for me? The job I'm working in, in, in is that what I wanted when I was a child? Is it feeding my soul? Is it, and, and uh, it's crazy how how much people are shifting their lives since this COVID time. It's a lot of job for, work, for coaches. <laughs> so that's good for me, uh, but um, yeah, it's huge. Searching for meaning, it's really important. There is a book really interesting called Finding, Finding Your Why. It's by uh, Simon, Sinek. Simon Sinek. I love that guy. The book is amazing. And we do that exercise in the school on the first weekend. What's my why? What's my cause? How can I find it? And how can I fight for that? And um, having the resource of my, of my gift to Push it, yeah. My why. And uh, another question: so How do you really define? Uh, so I know social media, we need to find what we really like, but yeah. we also need to make money at some point. And how do you find the niche that? Uh, because even if you go into the, the niche that doesn't make money, but it's your passion, you won't make any money. Can yet. Can you give a specific example? You want to teach it? Yeah, I mean, like, sorry, no, it's a bad example, but uh, for example, no, it's a good one. It's yours. Passionate about uh, something that nobody is interested in, in it, or it, like maybe it's not even sure. If space yeah. Space will bring money in the future. Like, it's a more big question. Like, ever doubting that the space will disappear or something? Ah. Uh. All that I've been now or will be will oh. waste. Oh. Okay. Um, what? When you want to start a business or something, you make two circles. In this circle, you write everything you feel that are your skills, what you really love in this circle, okay? In this circle, it's your potential clients, okay? That clients, you have to know what they really deeply want in their heart. So you have to speak with them. Every day I speak with everybody. If I go into a taxi, I speak with the taxi driver. And I ask, oh, what are you struggling with? What are your dreams? So I always train me to understand human, always. So the clients you want, you have to meet them. 
and ask three types of questions. You have to ask them, what do you want to change in your life? What do you struggle with the most? Okay? What are the emotions you feel when you struggle? Uh, can you give me an example in your life? No, to the people. <laughs> you can, you can if you want, but you have to, to ask a lot of questions about what do you struggle? Because human beings, they really don't like uncomfort. They hate it. Every human on earth. And they are chasing, searching for comfort. Everybody is doing like, is acting about that. That's why people cannot stop to smoke. Because the short term uncomfort is too high. So they, they can't. Because they focus on short term comfort on, or uncomfort. Okay? So you have to understand what's their uncomfort in their life. What do they struggle with? You know? What emotion they feel in that uh, space. Second kind of questions is what are they dreaming of? What do they really want? What do they desire the most in their life? Okay? Your service. Well, it's a small lesson, but so powerful. If you understand this, you can build everything you want. It's like life is a river, okay? And there is an A side and a B side. The A side is the place where you struggle, where people are. And the B side is the, pair, the, 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 the side they dream to, to go, okay? Your service is the bridge. But to know, to build your service, you have to, to meet them first. And never sending a survey, a stupid email survey. I, saw, I see so much people doing that. It's bullshit. Never. Nobody wants to fill surveys on the internet. Who, who does that? Do you, yeah. Speak to the heart of people. Have a really deep interest to that kind of people. The, the, the best book I, I learned was how to make friends from Dale Carnegie. Uh, and it's all about that. How can you meet deeply someone? So it's heart to heart, face to face. What do you struggle with the most? What do you dream about? And if you had to go there from there to there, which kind of service do you want? Do you want to read a book? Who explained you? Do you want to go to a conference? Do you want to watch uh, YouTube videos? Do you want to watch uh, Instagram feed, TikTok videos? Do you want to go to a course? Do you want to go to a workshop with other people that struggle at the same place as you? Do you want to go to a trip and fix the thing? What, what do you want? They will tell you what will be your service. They know it. You know? Is it, is it okay? Yeah? yeah? And, it's, and when you collect all of this and you remember what do you really want here, what are you good at, what are your skills, your service is here, in the middle. It's very easy. And after that, it's all about communication. That's a very important skill. Because I see a lot of people, they try to be, for example, in coaching, they make so much courses to learn that, 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 because they don't feel legitimate. And they say, oh, another course. 
I would feel more legitimate. And they forgot to invest the half of their money in the communication. For me, it's, it's a huge skill. Because when you meet people and you can really record what they say and have a, a lot of writing about all the answers they give you, because after, when you know your service and you have to communicate about it, you will speak with their words, not yours. And because you, you speak with their words, they will feel understood by you. You know? We always trust people that we feel understood by that people. It's like love. When you meet a guy or a girl, the connection is happening because you feel seen and understood. You know? That's when you give your trust to something. It's, life is simple. I, I really believe life is so simple. We, have, we are expert to, to make it difficult. <laughs> With our thoughts. And, but life is simple. It's just meeting each other, speaking to each other, and how can we work together and getting better. Because as souls, what we want is to grow. Always. It's our mission in life, is to grow. To heal, to grow. Yeah. So when you help people to grow in what they want, you have a service. Yeah. Oh, like you <laughs> the um, ah, how can you start? So just with uh, contempler, contempler, yeah. to deeply look, contempler. I don't know what the word in English is to deeply contemplation. contemplation? Yeah. For me, contemplation is a deeply act of spirituality. Waking early, just seeing the sun rising and watching the lights and smelling um, everything and hearing the birds. And that's a lot of spirituality. And for me, spirituality is also about taking actions about all what we fear. It's like our path is in life is after the fear, always. So when you act and you are fearful, but you act, it's a big action of spirituality. And all about taking care of, of others. You will, if you, if you have the intention to put spirituality in your life, spiritually will, will come to you. You will see <laughs> what's happening. You will have a conversation with someone talking to you with, about a book. And that book will be like, oh my God, that, that's amazing. I want to search more. So it will come to you. Yeah. My way was very strange about that. The woman I met and she was pregnant, Oh, I didn't finish the story because she lost the baby. So I will not be in like in 20 years, like with a teenager coming like, oh, you are my dad. <laughs> so she lost it. And, and uh, the, the, the crazy part that was that we started the relationship again. Because I, I, I'm in myself, I'm very loyal. So when I give something of me to someone, I'm very loyal. And with her, she was a spiritual teacher. And I was a very control, controlling guy because I was working in finance and I love to control everything. And I was very proud of myself. And I told that I'm in the control of everything. And, the, and she, being with her, I realized that I had so a, a lot of experience um, 
that people are sometimes afraid of uh, seeing entities. When I lost everything, I started to see uh, dead people everywhere, like in houses, in places. They were coming during the night to me, like, oh, can you help me? I have to speak to my brother. And I was so fearful. I was like, my mind, I was thinking like, I'm going crazy. And I went to a psychologist saying, look, I'm going crazy. I, I heard that, I hear that people and I see that people. And I'm, I'm, I'm so fearful about that. And she said, oh, it's a gift, it's crazy, you can help them. And uh, I said, no, I, I want to help living people. <laughs> it's a big stuff, you know? And when I said it with a deep intention, it stopped, almost. I have some very light experiences, but... And for me, it opened my mind to something bigger around us. So I started to read things about that and to search and to meet people who lived the same. And it opened me to some other worlds. And uh, also about mediums. And uh, at that moment, I started to uh, have some flash and voice about people I meet. You know, when you said about crypto, there was something coming like, oh, he has to teach. It's a teacher. So it's funny that from yourself you said, oh, I maybe want to teach them some stuff. Because I think it's your way. I so, had that feeling too, so. <laughs> yeah? Yes. Oh, that's great. So meet your future students and ask them what they want. <laughs> yeah, you can just do the survey and then you go to Joanna because her network is so big. And say, Joanna, I need that. I need that. Oh yeah, I know that people. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> She's so gifted to network. Yes. That's my gift. You have many. You have many. It's one of yours, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. There is a story, uh, my, my medium friend, uh, Aurore, they follow her, so they, they know her. She told me a story once and she said, it, it's a story about the relationship with money. It's a guy, he's really broke, he has no money, and he go to the psychologist to say, look, I have a problem with money, I'm always broke, I don't know what to do. And the psychologist said, hmm, I have a treatment. It's strange, but it's working. Do you want to do it? And the guy said, yeah, I'm so broke, I, I can do anything. And the guy said, you have to pee in a small thing and you have to put it under your bed. Okay, that's strange, that's weird. Can I see your diploma? Because you are a little bit weird. <laughs> but the guy went home, he did it, and he slept one night and he felt like He's the same, nothing has changed. He's calling the psychologist saying like, I did what you, what you told me and nothing changed. And the psychologist said, one more night. Okay, so it was the same pee from two days ago, still under the bed. And the guy was like, 
oh, my night is difficult. It's, it's smelling so, so hard. And I cannot sleep. And he's calling the psychologist the day after, saying, look, nothing has changed, but there is a big problem. It's, it's smelling so hard, and, and it's not comfortable. And, the, and the, what, what can I do? And the psychologist said, one more night. <laughs> and then he didn't sleep the whole night. It was crazy. And then he's going to the psychologist, open the door and saying, it's not working, it's not working. And the psychologist said, yeah, it's like money. You have to, you have to, it's an energy. If you put it to a box and you don't put movement in money, it's, it smells like shit. So it's the same. If you want more money, move the money. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's, like it's, it's almost like that. Yeah. Doris, do you want to make a question? Yes, please. Yeah. So, do you have any tips on storytelling? Because you mentioned in the beginning that's how you started, that you organized the conferences, and then you had your story, what happened with you. And so how did that start, or how did you learn to make the powerful storytelling? Oh, yeah. It's a very powerful habit to communicate with people because we are all big children. We love stories. We are very focused when we hear a story. Um, just make some exercise with friends around you um, or with your family or your boyfriend or you can just, what's happened to you during the day you exercise yourself to tell it on the dinner. And you say, oh, I saw a dolphin and it was crazy. And it, you, you start to exercise to tell stories, small stories of what is happening to you. Um, and we have stories every day. I mean, if we go to and we meet someone or we see an animal or we, we have stories every day, so start to uh, tell them to people you feel comfortable with, you feel in trust. And then um, try to put emotion that you were when you lived that story. So if you lived sadness in a moment, try it Try to be in the sadness you had in that moment. Don't be afraid about going into the emotion. That's where you catch the attention of people because they feel like, oh, she's true. You know? And so putting emotions into it, exercising with friends, and then you can go to other people you know, because you feel more confident and you, you can exercise with people you don't know. You know? And then you can exercise with them and then you, are, you always... A, a golden secret is always ask for feedback. So you can say like, guys, I have to exercise to tell stories. Can I tell you a three-minute story? And you can just tell me what you loved about my story. So they will give you a feedback and they will tell you, oh my God, you were so amazing when you told that and it was so funny and you are funny. Said, really? I'm funny? I feel sad most of the time. I'm really funny? So the thing is that in life, we are so close to our life. If you imagine life is like a book, our own life is like this in front of us. So other people, they see our book from a distance. So they can give our a feedback. And a lot of time it's a very specific feedback. And you have to listen to that. Maybe others will say, oh yeah, you were so funny, it's amazing. Uh, can you come tomorrow and you tell us a joke? And, I said, and you said, oh yeah, I will try. And so you exercise tomorrow uh, to memory a joke, and then you come with a joke, and yeah. 
maybe start with that and asking fees. Okay. Okay. YouTube is a huge, um, it's a huge um, terrain de jeu. It's a huge uh, field of game. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can learn to tell stories, yours and others, and you can observe how people react. Do they like it? Do they put comments? And you can start talking with them. What kind of story do you like? What do you want? And then always exercise you. Okay. <laughs> you have a YouTube channel? Not yet. Okay. So what's your service? My main service right now is some healing therapy. Oh, you told me about her. Okay. She she sent me your profile. And I sent her your profile. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> And when you, when you sell your service, do you speak about your story? Yeah. Oh, start with that. <laughs> because we have to understand why the sound is so important in your life. In your life. life. There is a reason. Yeah. Something happened in your life. So if you talk about that, we will be like, oh, I, I want to know. And the thing is that, yeah, I want to know too. <laughs> I will follow you to see if she doing is she doing the video about the the sound, um, because we want when we want to buy a service, we want to buy it with true people. Really, tr we we love true people. I mean, we live in a world which so many lies. I, I, I was traveling a lot of Latin, in Latin America last month. My God, it's, it's like everything is, um, I don't know the word in English, it's uh, um, governments and everyone is like playing in a game, a selfish game. And the world needs true people. So when we see someone speaking true about themselves, we feel connected with them. So take that risk. So people will connect with you. Uh, I speak about, a lot about myself. It was diff difficult in the beginning because I was afraid to be judged and to have bad comments and everything. After 30 minutes, is, is there a bad comment? <laughs> Another 30 minutes, oh, is there a bad comment? It, in, the in the beginning, it's like that, because we want to be loved. <laughs> but at the moment, you, you realize that no, everybody is okay. And when people feel you speak true, they feel connected to you, they start to follow you, and the connection is, is uh, yeah, starting. So maybe the best way is to tell the story how you fell in love with sounds. Mm -hmm. And what does it bring in your own life? How did it improve your life? How did it heal you, maybe? I'm, I'm certain. So then we can say, oh, part of my story is the same as hers. So if that helped her, it can help me. So I have to write to her <laughs> to have a session of some healing. Yeah. I think what you said is real people. I like, I like, I'm attracted to real, real people and not fake. Yeah. People who, you know, the people that you speak to them, how was your day today? Ah, look, everything's great, everything's great. All the time everything's great. Yeah. I, I like real people who say, how's it today? And they go, it's crap. The mm. cat vomited on the floor this morning. On my way to work, and I had then the tire was flat, and I had to change the tire. And yeah. then I got to work. That's a real person, and, and I like you because you're real. You're not, yeah. not every day, life's perfect, life's perfect. 
Yes. But then I know you're talking bullshit. And oh, yes. Like, yes. Yeah. You're so right. You have to find your authentic. Yeah, yeah. And usually you have to go back to when uh, I know the protein that I've done, they'll say, go back to when you were like four, five years old. Who were you then? Like, think about that person. Yeah. And that's usually your authentic self. Yeah. Uh-uh. Yeah. You're right. We are searching for that. Um, for me, experiencing the United States, it's, a, it's not so easy. Because it's a, such a different culture. And I really struggled for three months there. And I made videos about that. I'm not like, oh, I'm a coach, I have no problem. I speak my truth and I say to my community, I say, look, I'm in the United States, I have dreams, I want to accomplish things here, but it's so difficult to go deep into conversations. They hate that. They cannot do it. And I feel alone with, with all the deep conversations. And I had a conversation with my sister because I'm very close to my sister. She's working with me. And I said, oh my God, it's... I know I have to be here, but it's difficult to go deep with people. And she said to me, Andre, what you miss the most is what you have to build there. And I was like, oh, <laughs> wow. The universe makes you the experience of the difficulty because you have to change things. You have to build seminars to help people to connect in a deeper way. Oh, that makes sense. So I have to, to experience the difficulty to build something else and to use that energy of loneliness to build that things. And it's crazy because I always speak to my community about what I'm living, even if it's the good or even if it's the bad. And people are always saying to me, oh, you're so true, you're so authentic. I don't feel more authentic than other people, but I think they feel it because I share also the thing I struggle with. I was in a hotel in Mexico <clears throat> and it, it was an expensive one. <clears throat> And I arrived at the beach and there was, it was so dirty everywhere. And I was going to the manager and said, how is it possible? You are, you live in paradise. How can we see some dirty and not clean it? And you have all people with Instagram, oh look, I'm in paradise. And you arrive there and it's full of shit everywhere. It's a lie. And I spoke with, with the manager and I said, do you find it's normal to pay what I pay for one night and to have that shit in front of me if I'm on the beach? He said, yeah. I said, what, what did you say right now? Can you give me a bag? I will, I will put that stuff in the bag and we'll I do it. Stories, and I, I explained it to my community. And I said, guys, I feel so sad because we live in paradise. How is it possible not to take care of this wonderful planet? Can we all do the same in our country? Take a bag and going outside and put some dirty uh, things in. Because you know what? I was so angry, but when I, after that, I was full of joy. So sometimes we live in difficult emotions to make us move. It's all about that. So, yeah, speak about you. <laughs> Even if it's fearful, go there. It's, you will connect with a lot of people. Because we are all struggling, struggling with our life. 
everyone. And so if we speak about that, we join others in what they also live. Yeah, I really believe about that. So when will you do it? <laughs> now he's being a coach. <laughs> Action. Thanks. Yeah. Because you want to see it. I, 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 yeah, I don't like to have just a talk and feeling great. I, I mean, what's um, giving results is action. So if you feel it's right for you to do it, when do you want to engage to do it? You have a lot of witnesses. <laughs> and we're going to follow you on, on your social media. What's your, what's your Instagram? What did you say? Oh, maybe you can write it here. <laughs> so we can follow and you tell us, oh, I will do it tomorrow or next week. Or I don't want to put you the pressure if you don't want, but if you put a public engagement, there is a big chance you will do it. Okay. It's just a little bit hard to, I don't know, to put everything together and, and get it out there. And Maybe you can first explain it to someone with no camera. Yeah, I do that a lot of times. Okay. <laughs> but it's still like the camera and then the thought that having hundreds or thousands of people already watching my videos and know that they gonna know everything <laughs> and I have fear of judgment yeah what they gonna say and they gonna say bad things about me or you can s try a s small part and then a small another one and then a small another one yeah little steps but I will follow <laughs> I will encourage you or will comment like, oh, it was great. What's the next? <laughs> mm. Okay. I think there's always going to be somebody who's going to write something mean yeah. on a page, but that's the minority. And I think when you, it's really hard not to focus on the negative things, but if you try really hard to like, push that away and just look at all the positive things, then you're going to have a better group. There's always going to be somebody who's going to try to take you down yeah. for whatever reason, because of their own sadness. You're right. Or, yeah. And, and go back from your cause. You know when I have to speak to uh, 1,000 people? My heart is beating. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, my mind is like, oh my God, if, 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 uh, if I'm wrong, if I say wrong things, and if people is like standing up and say, you are bullshit. <laughs> my mind is like, my mind is like going like that. And really, I, yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking about that. And if I'm in that space, I'm, I'm dead. So I always try to connect with my heart with my calls and, and starting like, maybe I can help one person speaking true, just one person. I just start with that. And if I launch a video and I'm scared, that maybe it will help just one person and I do it. And I realize, oh, it happened, nothing to me, I'm still alive. <laughs> And I, I start again and again and again. And then after you just, you, you just almost don't care anymore. You know? So, yeah. Little steps. <laughs> we're, gonna end, we're gonna follow you and encourage you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's brave. It's a huge path to be on social media and to speak about ourselves. It's something very brave. So be proud of the way you already did. It's a big one. Yeah. 
Are we good? I, I, fe I feel hungry. Let's go. <laughs> Who wants to have dinner with us? We're going out for dinner. I don't know. Uh, somewhere. Okay. Yes? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, you too. <laughs> Do you want to join? To eat? Yeah? Okay. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for having us.